Hello YouTube, welcome back to WTFRC Cars. So, carrying on with the TTO2 build. I'm still waiting for my uh, servo choice for it, but we do have one spare kicking around from the Traxxas. So I'm going to set it up on that one and then I'll switch it out at a later date when the other one finally turns up. So, <clears throat> what we're going to be doing... We're going to be using the Flysky Noble Pro because I run all my race cars off that one. We're going to be using the FGR 4S uh, little antennaless receiver. This one comes with the uh, Carson Dragster brushed 70 amp waterproof ESC. And I'm going to be running this. Um, glad it came with this one because I tend to prefer this to the Tamiya one. Um, and it also... It's got Dean's connectors on it, which I run off all the uh, Tamiya style batteries anyway. We're going to be running this on 2S LiPo. So, let's get you in for a close-up look and we'll carry on with the build. Right, so, just put these to one side for a minute. First thing you're going to want to do is get your ESC connected to channel 2. Then, we're going to want a servo connected to channel 1 so we've got all those connected on this one we need a bind plug so we're going to pop that in I'm going to connect that up and then if we turn it on so we've got this flashing light we're going to power up the transmitter Welcome to and then Basically, we're just going to go into model select, select an empty channel, quickly give it a name. Channel number definition is going to be 4. And we can drop out of that, go into bind set, classic and bind. And by the looks of that, I'm guessing this is one of the F. FGR 4S's that I've not updated so let's see if we can get it into update mode and that's just going through updating it So we should be able to bind it now. Binding. Yep. Binding successful. So you just want to check your endpoints, make sure they're all centered, make sure your sub trims are centered, because the whole point of doing this is to center a servo. Man, that is not the fastest servo, but <laughs> That won't be a problem. Right, so once you've got that all centred, turn it off and you can unplug everything because it will make it uh, easier. So we'll move that and that out the way for the time being. And then we want to go back to the servo. So you need to select a screw. Uh, the easiest way to do this is get your servo. They're all 10 mil screws. It gives you a bunch to choose from. And make sure it'll screw in and it's not getting uh, bound up on any threads or anything like that. Then we're going to want on this 25 tooth servo horn. Now it's showing us to sit a servo this way. And then you're going to want to line that up as close as you possibly can to pointing straight down. And that is the P4 part that fits uh, 25 spline. It could be the, I believe the other one is the D11 part that you may need if you're not using a 25 tooth servo. So then you want to place on P5. Then on top of that. We have D10, it's quite a long servo arm this one, 
and then you've got the little tiny spacer or washer if you like and that one is the P1 then we're going to need to drop the screw in and then you're going to need to tighten this down and then just check make sure your servo is not jammed up because you put the screw in it then we can move along to the next part so you want to pop the little olives the little b11s into d6 and for some reason these are really really stiff but they're not once they pop in must just be different different material to the uh, other parts then we're going to get one of the longer screws and you're going to want to screw this into the steering assembly so basically this is how you want it to go together you want your two little B11s popped into the steering bar then you've got the two silver screws both need to be on the same side you've got it coming through to part A5 on the outside and the whole assembly just screws in with two screws straight through the B11s one into the servo saver one into the actual uh, A5 steering arm then you've got the two little black parts and you have the little curve at the top with one screw and one washer on either side and then that's got our servo assembly all put together so let's see what else we've got right so parts we're going to need for this we have d7 and then d8 so we're going to get that we're going to place that on top and then if they don't keep jumping out my fingers we're going to put four of the silver eight millimeter screws into the top of this little ducting and then we need to get these screwed in all right that's the four eight mil screws screwed into place we're not going to be using the switch because the switch on this esc mounts to the side of esc so then we're going to place it on top you've got an eight millimeter screw that goes on the inside and a 12 millimeter silver screw that goes on the outer side so in the hole furthest away then you're going to want two of the tapered head screws and then you're going to want to place your servo over those two holes so we're going to try and get it somewhere near and then you want to flip the RC upside down and luckily Traxxas servo lines up pretty good so then we can drop these two in and we just need to screw these down And then that's got those two fastened in then you want to align your steering with this top bar then we've got two of these little screws so we want a little bit of grease on these and then we've got to drop one each into these top holes and this is also a part that you can upgrade to aluminium and bearings which would probably give um, longer life so we just need to screw these down then we've got us steering in place we've got this top cover in place I'm not going to be using the d12 which is the antenna mount 
because we don't need to in this we're using the little antennaless uh, receiver so that's got a steering all in it's got a motor cover on so now we need to look and see where we're going to be mounting the receiver and ESC right so for fixing the speed controller and the receiver in I'm going to use this 3M dual lock it's a bit like velcro but a bit stronger and it's worked pretty faultlessly in all of my uh, race RCs so far so I'm going to stick that down with that and then let's get the receiver in and what I like about this stuff you can just pull it out and all you have to do is press it down and it locks in but I've never had it come loose so once we've got that in place we need to work out which way as wires are going to need connecting so just to try it I'm going to put yellow to yellow and blue to green see how we go with that that is going to pass over to the battery Then we're going to want our ESC into channel 2. We're going to want a steering servo into channel 1. Then we should be able to connect as battery. And let's see which way round as wheels and the steering is going. So we're definitely going to have to uh, turn the endpoints down and everything, but so at least as forward and reverse is going right, and the steering's going right direction. But we're definitely going to have to uh, sort them endpoints out. Signal lost. Shutting down. But that's all checked and all working. So we can remove the battery if you're running the Carson speed controller you're going to want both these jumpers right on the outside the top one is for one tenth car and the bottom one is the lipo and nim selection so moving on we're going to have to tidy these wires up now this is all going to depend on what system you're running and normally I would consider shortening these but I'm pretty sure with length of that servo wire that's out of possibly the TRX4 so it's a really long one because it's out of a crawler so if we fold all them back on themselves we should be able to get it somewhat tidy for the time being at least let's see if I can pull that through and get that out way a little so at least that gets them something like tidy and then if we pass the battery wire through that should at least make sure when the battery goes in it's keeping it out way of the drive shaft because you don't want it catching on that but right let's have a look what else we need all right so next we're going to be fitting the tires to the wheels so I just find it easy to just work them around until they until they pop on. Yeah, 
you just want to make sure that nothing's getting pinched and then you just need to glue them which there's a whole number of ways of doing this but I just find it easier to just run the glue around outside and let it sit wherever it sits um, these aren't the wheels and tires I'm going to be using for racing so it's just going to be for driving it around there's no foams in these anyway so but let's uh, let's get some glue and see if we can stick these so on the back because I don't care what it looks like I find it easier just to run the glue straight round them uh, these are still a bit wet but it has got old perfectly it's not run down onto tread so you'll not see it uh, when it's on car and when you use it the excess does tend to rub off basically <laughs> it comes off uh, it has done on uh, all my race RCs after a bit of use it just cracks off and falls away but it still keeps tyre glued so we've got to do that and then once that's dry you can flip them over and glue the fronts but let's see what else we've got to do while they're drying so basically all I do is put the glue on the outside and then just roll it round the wheel and I just let it work its way round and then just let it set and you get like a shiny effect around wheel but it tends to come off after so long but never really bothers me um, I think most of my race cars it's completely come off but the tyres stay stuck right moving along what we're going to need for the next part is you're going to need a bearing or bushing depending how you're building your car you're going to need two of the A14s you're going to need a set of wheel nuts and then you're going to need two of these little pins so we're going to pop a bearing on and work that into the hub then you're going to want one of your pins then you're carefully going to want to place one of these on so the pin goes into the uh, cross section on back Icing with death, touching these uh, tyres before I'm absolutely certain they've set. But if we pop one of them on, then we should be able to get a wheel nut. And all you've got to do is make sure that the pin hasn't dropped out. Because they have a habit of doing it and then as you tighten it up it sort of misshapes your hex drive. So you should be able to tell if it's gone on straight if you spin the wheel and it's not wobbling all over. So we'll spin it round, quickly get the second bearing on. As drive pin in carefully get the hex drive into position and we get a wheel on and if you hold the wheel against the hub you can minimise the chance of the drive pin dropping out on you. And they don't need to be screwed down ridiculously tight. You, they are lock nuts, so they should lock in position. Right, let's see what else we need. Right, so moving along to the rear, we're going to need a bearing. And again, I've already greased these, but you may be using bushings. Um, I'd strongly advise if you are going to use the RC at all, build it with bearings. Then we're going to need the little A14 hex adapter. So we get that on. Then we're going to need to get a wheel in place. That feels like it's gone on. And 
again just a quick spin give you an idea that you've got the uh, X adapter lined up correctly They are very open diffs on this, <laughs> as you'd expect with just grease. Right, so let's move along and see what else we need. So moving along, it's time us to mount the body posts. Now these can be mounted with spacers, rear and pointing forward and all kinds. This really depends on what body shell you're putting on, but you can get a good idea if you place the body shell on with the wheel archers where they should be and then you can see whether your shock mounts are in front or behind now on this it looks like both mounts will have to be mounted towards the inside coming up so let's get the body post mounts and uh, you'll be looking for b5 for the front and b6 for the rear so we'll get them ready right so to mount these you're looking for the um, screws with the head that you can put in using the little Tamiya tool. So on the rear, we're going to go for the B6s and no spacers. So let's see how close we can get these. And as for the height of the body, it's pretty much down to individual preference, just what you like the look of, how low you want it to ride. And it'll also depend on which of the TTO2 chassis you're building and whether you're building it for on-road or off-road. So it does tell you to put it in using the little Tamiya wrench tool, but won't go into the ends of it so that's the rear ones I believe the front ones will also need to mount facing inwards for this chassis I must admit it does seem easy again it at least started with this uh, little wrench tool tends to hold them in place better I must admit it's uh, it's quite a nice RC to build this I uh, can see how some people could definitely uh, definitely struggle following the instructions the way it jumps to P18 and P19 depending on whether or not you're building the um, high or low ground clearance chassis or the short or standard wheelbase but let's have a look see how close these are yeah so that that looks like it's going to be pretty close and one thing you can do is set the ride height so you can look before you paint the body shell and see where you might want the body clips to go but uh, let's have a look looks like that's about about right so if you're building the mclaren one or the center body shell you definitely want the body post pointing inwards without any spacers right see what else we need right so we've got to the stage where it's asking us to fit the bumper so you should just be able to lower that into position and then it looks like that just lines up on top of it not really sure how or if it's meant to position itself on it but it says you use the innermost holes 
So let's see if we can get these screws to go down into it. So it looks like they're going to hold it in position. Next, we're going to need, if I can find it, the battery mechanism to hold the battery down. So we're going to need that in place. Let's see if it fits with these. It should do because they tend to fit just about everything else. And that's going to be held on. Just with these little well big body clips and then your battery is going to go over the top not really sure about that balance lead though plugging it in that way i think i'd probably send that to back let's flick it around see if there's any uh, any less chance of it uh, getting stuck somewhere yeah it certainly looks like it's going to be uh, more held that way or everything that way around and the last thing we've got to do is get as little body clips and set the body height but i'm gonna wait until i get that all cut out and painted maybe it'd be nice if we'd got somewhere to uh, cable tie that to might have to drill an hole in this plastic just so I can cable tie the battery cables that way. I don't want them flapping around. But that's about as far as we're going to get at the moment because I've got all the body shell to paint and then we can work out how high we're going to mount it. But quite a nice little car. Um, quite easy to build. I'm not sure if we've got some... Uh, it looks like double sided tape looks like it could do a bit of foam on the battery that, uh, that wouldn't be a bad call just to stop it flapping about or maybe stuck on bottom of this battery bar but let's wrap this one up right so there you have it that's the uh, chassis at least complete for the TTO2 and as I said to say these aren't damped they don't feel that bad to say it's not going to be jumping, it's an on-road RC. Um, you don't get adjustable steering bars with it or tie rods. You can adjust the ride height by flipping the rear hubs, I believe, and you move the spacers on the front. So you move the order that them spacers and shims are in. The stock servo saver doesn't actually feel bad for a Tamiya. So that's not too bad. Um, there's definitely areas where you could improve. Um, you can get full adjustable suspension uh, steering kit for it. You can swap this steering mechanism out for a metal one with a fully adjustable bar on the top and it has bearings in these arms. But I think it would be drivable as it is, which is nice. Um, the mods that we've done aren't to improve performance, they're literally just to improve reliability. So the output drives to the drive shaft and the front CVDs and the output cups to go with them. The ball race kit, I would advise any Tamiya that you are going to run, if it doesn't come with ball racers, buy them for it. They're usually about between 8 and 12 quid. Um, they're not very expensive. Uh, do like the way generally that the Carson ESC runs and we are running the stock motor in it but um, that's about as far as I can get at minute I will be swapping this Traxxas servo out for one that's slightly faster it will be running on the uh, Noble Pro and uh, it's probably going to be running off these Z and the Gen Ace 2S LiPo batteries that we've got um, they're not high voltage they're just standard voltage range so it should be absolutely adequate for this to run the stock motor and we will be changing these tires out for some slicks for racing on carpet 
But thanks again for watching WTFRC Cars. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell, share to friends and family. And I'll catch you guys again in the next one. Oh, yeah.